Hello and welcome to Chit Chat where we talk about board games and why we love them. Today I'm going to be doing a painting tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how I paint um, these miniatures from Arcadia Quest. And my example miniature today we're going to be painting Wisp. This video specifically is going to be part one of two and I'm going to be showing you painting of his skin, his eyes, and his hair. And as you can see here, these are some of the other miniatures that I have painted from Arcadia Quest. Most of these are heroes, but there are a couple monsters as well. So you can get kind of an idea of the quality that I like for these miniatures. So again, this is like not a definitive, this is exactly how you have to paint these miniatures. This is just how I like to do it. So let's get started. All right, so I'm starting here with the skin, which I usually always start with skin when I'm painting these guys up. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just putting on a base layer of my color. And what I'll do is this color here, I'll actually put on a couple layers for this color um, just so I can get a nice solid layer for that, for that skin color to build on. This is going to be, as I said, pretty basic um, in how I do it. So what I'll do is I will do my basic color and then I'll do my highlights, which I'm moving on to now. Oh, actually, sorry. This I'm showing you a mistake I made. Um, you can see there I made a little mistake on his face, but that's okay because they're easy to fix. So now we're moving on to our highlighting. And what I did was I mixed my previous skin color with a little bit of an off-white. And I'm applying that to like the ridge on his nose and also the top of the cheeks and right above the eyebrow. And you can see as soon as you start putting that highlight color on, we're seeing the difference that that makes and that's really exciting. Um, here I'm going in, putting in another layer and you can see even more of that contrast starting to pop out where that base color starts to look a little bit darker. Those highlights stand out a little bit more. Um, Wisp looks like he's scowling a little bit more. Um, this is the wash that I'm gonna be using. Um, I use the soft tone wash for skin, that's my preference, and the dark tone I'll use for armor and things like that. But I think that the soft tone works really well for flesh colors, and that's again just going to create even more contrast. So as you can see, as soon as I start putting that on, um, we're seeing a lot of contrast in the recesses of his eyes, and I'll add a little bit into his ears, of course, to define those lines a little bit more. Um, and the cool thing about wash is it's very liquidy. So what you can do is you can move it around. You can get that exactly where you want it and make it so that you're happy with how that looks. So here you can see I slowed things down just so I could focus a little bit more on the line where the mask meets his face and also that ridge right under his nose. I really like that. I think it kind of enforces that serious scowl he's got. So moving on to hair, I had painted a layer of gray onto the hair, but I wasn't really happy with it. The color was a little bit too light. So I'm showing you here the slightly darker gray that I started with. And you may be going, oh, Wisp has white hair. Why are we starting with gray? Um, I'm doing the gray first, and then I'll do the white on top over most of it, leaving some of the gray to create shadows. And I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. Um, you can see, sorry, I got a little bit out of focus here, but you can see we're just applying the gray to every part of his hair here. And don't be afraid to turn the miniature around to make sure that you're covering all the angles. Remember that these are 3D models. Um, it's not just 2D, so if you turn something you may find something that you had previously missed, just like under this edge here. And for anyone who's curious, I am using a size 2 brush here. Um, for pretty much all of the miniature, other than like the eye details I'll be using, and a couple of highlighting details I'll be using the size 2. I also put that gray on his eyebrows, which you can see there. Alright, moving on to our white. Now, as you can see here, I'm going to put the white just onto the tops, um, like that front facing of his hair. So I'm going to be leaving the, the sections where like the, the mold curves down or um, like those deeper recesses. It's kind of, um, instead of doing like a gray wash, I am just leaving some of that gray underneath. Whoa. Sorry, things got a little crazy there. I'm leaving some of that gray underneath, and here you can see that's going to create a really nice shadow effect for us. Now, as when you're adding light colors on top of dark colors, you're pretty much always going to have to do um, multiple layers, so I did end up doing just two layers of the white here. On the back, you can see a little bit better what I meant about, um, you know, leaving some space for that gray. 
Sorry, I had to skip ahead. A little two-year-old decided that it was her turn to be in the video, and so she was blocking the camera for a minute there. But you can see the effect, especially in the front there, that that gray um, peeking through underneath gives a nice shadowed effect. We're going to go through and add a second layer. And I do have all of this sped up to about five times the, uh, the normal speed here. Saw my fuzzball head in there for a second. And here's what you can see. That hair is pretty much done now, other than his eyebrows. And we'll add some white, just like we did for the eyes. And it creates really nice depth, really nice shadow, but fairly simple. I mean, it didn't take a lot of time. And you can see just with two different colors, you're getting a lot of contrast um, in his hair. And now, moving on to the eyes, um, the first thing I'm going to do is paint the entire eye area white. And you'll notice here, I actually did get a little bit wide on the eye area, like I got, I went a little bit wider than I had to, but that's okay, because after this I'm going to wash the eye black so I can get the black around the edge of his eye. Now Wisp has red eyes, and normally with these chibi eyes I like to do multiple layers, like a darker red, and then a lighter red, and then then the black iris and then the white highlight. But for a simpler version, I'm just going to show you with a dark red how you can still achieve some really nice looking eyes. So I start with one eye and what I do is I always want to hold him as if he was looking right at me. So instead of trying to center the iris um, in either eye, he'll end up actually looking wonky eyed if you do that. Just have it looking right at you and paint straight down on the eye. Now, on the second eyeball, I actually made a little bit of a mistake, which you're going to see here. It got a little bit too wide. So what I did was I went back and I tried to adjust, and you can see that the left eye is a little bit wider than the right, which is okay, because what I ended up doing was, after that had dried a little bit, I just took this white paint and I just smoothed that edge a tiny bit, like that's it, I'm done, um, to kind of bring that eye back in. And here's the highlight, just a little bit of white coming in from the side, and make sure it's coming in from the same side on both eyes, and that's it. That's all I was going to do for the eyes on him, and it's really simple, really straightforward. Moving on to the very last thing I want to show you about these eyes is that dark wash I told you about. Now, I use the soft tone for the skin. This is the dark tone. It's closer to a black, and I'm using that to get that dark line around the outside of his eyes. You do lose a little bit of the brightness of the white this way, but you're, it's a really easy way to get the dark around the eyes without having to paint it on, which can be a hassle, especially if you're new to the hobby. And um, I know when I tried to do dark eyes the very very first time that that ring around the eyes I ended up having to paint it over and over again because I kept messing up and as you can see this is really simple and it comes together really quickly and it gives you still a really nice look around the eyes and that's it for his hair his skin and his eyes thanks for checking out this video as you can see we have wisp completed here so stay tuned for part two where I will be painting his clothing and his armor and all of that other stuff and you'll get to see how we finish him up also, stay tuned for a tutorial on how to get these neat chibi looking eyes.